えっと、じゃあ,あの僕の講演ではですね、えっと、In my speech, I will first introduce、uh, Professor Barish, spending about the initial 10 minutes, and then I would like to discuss、uh, Higgs boson and、uh, detectors. As it was mentioned earlier, in 2017, for the first ever observation of gravitational wave, Professor Barish received Nobel Prize for Physics, but he has received numerous accolades and awards. I will not go through every one of them, but you can see that he has won numerous、uh, accolades. And He received a PhD from UC Berkeley and he joined Caltech, California Institute of Technology, as a research fellow, then assistant professor, associate professor, and professor. From 1991, he held the position of Linde Professor of Physics. And、uh, Brooks Haven Lab,、uh, Stanford、uh, Linear Accelerator Lab. In California and in Fermi Lab in Illinois, he、uh, engaged in research. In the meantime, in 1970, at Fermi Lab, he conducted,、uh, he proposed a neutrino experiment with uh, Frank s i l l y Scully、uh, from Caltech. And there is a standard model of particles. What was predicted under the standard model was weak neutral, neutral current、uh, interaction, which he observed for the first time. In 1975, at Cornell, he、uh, conducted a CLIO experiment with. Electron positron collider at Cornell、uh, to conduct the research on tau lepton, which,、uh, what, uh, dis which was discovered、uh, at the time. Proton Uh, is a negatively charged out in comparison to positron、uh, correction. Electron and positron have、uh, opposite、uh, charges. These oppositely charged、uh, particles are collided in particle、uh, colliders. In 1975, he joined a DELCO experiment. This uses an experimental、uh, detector at SLAC. There is a positron electron proton collider before, as shown、uh, at the bottom.、Uh, proton and positron are accelerated and will be introduced in a PEP or beam. And、uh, will be、uh, circulated in opposite directions、uh, to, for them to collide. And the charm quark、uh, formation and collapse、uh, was researched. And that is also my doctoral thesis under the supervision of、uh, Professor Barish, of course. And the macro experiment is、uh, another experiment that he led.、Uh, this is done at underground research facility at、uh, Gran Sasso in Italy. He proposed the experiment in 1986, started to collect the data in 1989. Detector was completed in 1990. In 2000, data collection was finished. And ex exploration of particles with, with magnetic charge was the objective. Particles that is、uh, electrically charged、uh, is said to be、uh, not、uh, magnetically charged, and the objective was to explore such magnetically charged、uh, particles. And although、uh, magnetic Magnetically charged a particle was not found. If、uh, such a particle was discovered, it would have been、uh, equivalent to a、uh, Nobel Prize at the time. And he led a GEM experiment as a leader for three years from 1991 to 1993. GEM is SSC, Superconducting Super Collider. Some of you may have heard of this. This is a huge project in the south of Dallas. Circumference of 87 kilometers was the size of the detector that was built there. And the proton and proton were to be accelerated、uh, to、uh, cause collision. This was a huge project. But in 1993, unfortunately, this project was canceled, terminated by the US government. Although the project itself was canceled,、uh, it gave us a lesson、uh, on a huge project. For example, cost、uh, became larger, and how to run international experiment.、Uh, we had a much uh, learning uh, lessons uh, learned、uh, from this project. And then、uh, he saved and led LIGO gravitational wave experiment. LIGO ha has two facilities one in Hanford in Washington, and the other in Livingston, Louisiana. 
There are two facilities for LIGO, and in the beginning, in 1980, around 1980, a kilometer size inter interferometer. Uh, data interferometer was to be developed uh, for the possibility of detecting gravitational wave and then LIGO was planned. Up until 1994, sufficient research funding could not be secured. In 1994, Professor Barish became the leader of LIGO and began to rebuild the research organization uh, on a full scale and a result about 40 billion yen in yen term of research funding was approved. In 1997, two facilities were almost complete. In 2002, data collection began. In 2004, enhancement plan for LIGO was approved. And this plan started uh, with about 60 billion yen of funding. In 2015, with the enhanced LIGO, data acquisition began. And immediately afterwards, gravitational wave was observed for the first time uh, on February 11, 2016, that first ob observation was announced. And after a LIGO experiment, at the time uh, the experiment was running at LIGO, he started a different project, which is uh, to lead International Organization for International Linear Collider, ILC. This is the next generation linear uh, electron positron collider. This is one of the candidates for Higgs factory. And uh, later, I will be discussing Higgs factory in more detail. And this was for about eight years from 2005 to 2013. He was the uh, director for ILC, ILC International Design Team. And TDR, technical uh, detail, the report, uh, the engineering uh, design uh, draft was completed in 2012. And uh, the TDR draft was announced in Akihabara in Japan on December 15, 2012. The gentleman at the center is uh, Professor John Bakker, ILC steering committee chair. And we see Professor Barish to the left and Professor Yamada to right of Professor uh, Bakker. Uh, so Professor Bakker uh, sh shook hands with Professor Barish and then with uh, Professor Yamada. And uh, with this, uh, technically, in principle, ILC uh, was ready to start uh, in terms of start of the plan. This was about 10 years ago. After Mr. Yam uh, Professor Yamada, there were regional uh, directors uh, for North America, Europe, and Asia for detectors. And I was serving as representative for Asia for detector studies. Under Professor Barish, I obtained a PhD and uh, 20 years since then, I was lucky to be able to engage in joint research with Professor Barish. And since then, uh, our families uh, became very good friends. This is from 2007 April. This was about half a year before the announcement of the Nobel Prize. This was in Hapo and in Tokyo. Now, let me go on to my talk. This is a CERN Research Institute located at the suburb of Geneva. And this is a Lehman Lake. And the uh, circumference is about 30 kilometers equivalent to the circumference of uh, Yamanote line. There, Large Hadron Collider, LHC, resides. This is a collider for the proton and proton. And there is a big apparatus there, Atlas apparatus. You can see the size of a human being there, it's huge. And there is another one, CMS apparatus. And the objectives of which is to discover Higgs boson. And uh, Higgs boson was uh, discovered on the July the 4th, 2012. The, there was a collision of uh, proton to proton, Higgs boson was produced, then immediately it decayed into two photons, and two photons has been captured to reconstitute a new particle. And uh, in this way, new particle was discovered. Mass is about 130 times larger than the proton. As predicted, this was something we had discovered, discovered with Stan. This is a graph. 
horizontal axis, uh, you can see the two uh, photons uh, distribution of uh, mass. And there is a background phenomena there, and you can see the a little bit uh, bump. And you can see the bottom line, which is very neatly depicted bump, which is a Higgs particle. And when this was announced, all over the world, reporters came to see the event because the particle of God was discovered. That was a hype. And the camera is directed at the two professors seated at the front desk. Those are two, Professor Higgs and Professor Angre, the two of them. And in the next year, they have been awarded the Nobel Prize for physics. It takes several tens of years for becoming the laureate of the Nobel Prize, but uh, it was very quick this time. So there is a standard theory for the elementary particles, and that was the last undiscovered uh, particle. Not only the undiscovered uh, particle, but it was a very special one because it's a source of the mass of uh, all the particles. I will cover this later, but uh, uh, we can emulate uh, the vacuum of the space with this particle. This is an elementary particle which cannot be divided uh, any further. Very fundamental one. There is a water, molecule of water, H2O. It is not called the uh, elementary particle because it, it has an inner structure. So you can see the nuclei around which electron is a uh, rotating, there is an inner structure there, so it's not an elementary particle. But if you look into the nucleus, uh, very detailed, there is a eight electron and uh, a proton and so forth. If you look into the proton, there is an upward quark and a down quark, different uh, particle. So those are not the elementary particle. And let's look at quark, as far as we know. Uh, this is the uh, fundamental particle, which is the elementary particle. And of course, there are so many elementary particles out there. And the one is called the particle for the matter, up quark and down quark and the U and mu and so forth. And there's a charm quark and strange quark, top quark and the bottom quark. And also there is a lepton in which there is an electron, one electron, as well as a muon and tau particle, and correspondingly, there is a neutrino. And they react, and these particles are mediated by a particle, force particle, which is called a gauge particle. Photon for electromagnetic force, W and Z for weak force, and gluon for strong force. So strong and weak force. It's not mere weakness of the force. It's a technical term to descri describe the weak force. And there is a reaction involved here. And at the end, and the Higgs particle gives masses to all other particles. So we are talking about the standard theory. This is the apex of uh, human wisdom. 20 Nobel Prize have been put into this uh, study. So there are two principles uh, involved for the standard theory. One is the gauge theory, if there is a electron and w, w and so forth. It uh, uh, dictates how it reacts between the particles. If you look at the nature, uh, this holds very true. So it's a very uh, archaic theory for the nature. But there is one problem. In general, all the uh, elementary particles need to be zero in mass, otherwise uh, this will not hold up as a theory. But uh, in real, uh, many of the uh, elementary particles uh, have a mass, like electron quark and W and Z. Then comes the Higgs mechanism, Higgs mechanism, which gives mass to the elementary particle while holding gauge theory intact. 
What does it mean? So there is, let's suppose that a Higgs particle exists and there's a vacuum in the space. But in real vacuum of a universe is a fully filled up by Higgs boson. But we cannot see that. It's not visible. Let's suppose that. So there was an elementary particle without mass. But uh, because there is a Higgs particle, and if the particle moves through that, uh, then the mass will be gained. It's hard to picture that. So let me use the analogy to describe this. Let's say this is a swimming pool. This is a universe where there is a water filling up. The depth of the water is the density of the Higgs field, the value of the Higgs field filling up the universe. And the state without any wave is the universe vacuum. No one can see it. If there's a surface wave, then it will be the observable Higgs particle. And uh, so this is a representation of the Higgs uh, particle when we see the wave. And to start with, uh, there is a skinny person and fat person without uh, having a mass. Let's say two of them are floating. There is no mass so that uh, two people should float in the water. Fat man and a skinny man, they are walking through the water. We are talking about mass. If the uh, mass is given, then it makes the people hard to move, hard over mobility. How much can they move within this environment? Fat person has a bigger water resist resistance. They feel the legs are heavy, which means that uh, they get a larger mass. And what is uh, possible here that according to this analogy, the fat person will create more waves. And waves are, as I said, the observing uh, Higgs bosom. So the fat person would strong, more react, strongly, more strongly react with the Higgs bosom. It's a very simple analogy, but this is something like that in the standard theory. It really perfectly comes out like that. So we are talking about vacuum, emptiness, which is filled with the Higgs boson, which is rather unconvincing. I'm deviating a bit, but uh, at the uh, Buddhist world, uh, it is often said that uh, nothing is everything and everything is nothing. Empty is void and so forth. And also everything is nothing like uh, thought. If we say there is nothing, it means that uh, there are lots of things and there is nothingness. Empty, but empty doesn't mean nothing. Empty means that uh, it's filled with everything. That's what the Buddhists said. Sorry for deviating a bit. So Buddha, initially when he founded the Buddhism, he didn't know, of course, the existence of Higgs boson, that's for sure. So I'm talking about standard theory and all the elemental particles have been discovered. But uh, someone thought that uh, there is uh, something wrong with the mass of Higgs because there is a heavy, they react with a heavy particle because there is a cloud which can be created around the Higgs, and there is a mass of that cloud, and that mass can be uh, calculated by standard theory. If you compute it, then it's uh, 100 trillion times larger than the mass observed with the Higgs. Let's imagine a woman is wearing a fur coat, 100 kilograms. Uh, but uh, if you uh, calculate the uh, full coat uh, uh, weight, only then it was 10 trillion ton. There is something wrong here. It doesn't add up. So new theory was brought to resolve this issue. For example, a supersymmetry theory. There is a standard theory, and they say that there is a shade, a particle existent. They also react and make a cloud around the Higgs. And it cancels out to the uh, those based on the uh, standard theory. That's why the uh, cloud will not get uh, any heavier. There is an extra dimension theory as well. We are supposed to be living on the 3D world, but uh, it might not be it. We cannot see other extra 
啊，喺最近八月係白海 Energy Cloud。Then it can go into the extra dimension which we can see. That is the theory. So first point to be noted here why the Higgs boson is so important because there is a, a many other theories uh, like uh, relativity theory and so forth. Uh, under the uh, standard theory, a bit uh, different from the standard theory. The Higgs bosom exists. It looks very similar, but uh, a little bit different. That is the point number one. Uh, what is the problem with uh, standard theory? So there is no uh, candidate for the dark matter. What is the dark matter? Look at the universe. Look at the energy and the mass. And the uh, relativity theory said that energy equals to mass. And looking at it, uh, two thirds of that uh, is called unknown dark energy. So accelerated uh, um, expansion is observed with the universe, and it makes uh, pressure. There must be some energy there, so it should be called dark energy. But we don't know what this uh, dark energy is. And the remainder of one third is uh, what we are familiar with, mass with weight. But uh, within that uh, mass, the neutron and the proton we know, but uh, it only constitutes 20% of the mass as we know it. Away is other mass that is a dark matter. So we know that uh, there is a dark matter. We know the existence of the dark matter. Why do we know that? Because for one thing, there is a galaxy containing one trillion pieces of a star, and we can look at the speed of the star in the galaxy. It's not dependent on the distance from the center. That's known in the solar system. The star far away from the sun moves more slowly. But within the uh, galaxy, even if at the margin, the Actual speed is equivalent to that which is at the center. So if visible one is a mass, then if they move away from you, uh, it's, it, should, it looks as if they are moving more slowly. But no, it's not really because of the existence of the gravity, and that is the dark matter. Galaxy is composed of uh, billions of stars, and cluster of galaxies are composed of hundreds and thousands of galaxies. And looking at the speed of the galaxy in a similar way, at the periphery speed is not slower. There is something pulling. There must be something pulling, and that is considered to be dark energy. More directly, what is visible is a collision of cluster of galaxies, and uh, this is the uh, bullet uh, cluster. What is visible here is uh, the result of observation. This is not computer simulation, but result of observation. These white dots, most of them are galaxies. And this is a telescope a photograph, optical photograph. And pink uh, is uh, X-ray observation. With the collision, interstellar matter is heated, and gas is emitting X-ray. Blue part is gravitational lens mass distribution. A mass distribution derived from gravitational lens, and this is supposedly dark matter. When two clusters of galaxies are colliding, uh, this is the photograph of two cl clusters of galaxies are colliding. About 100 million stars comprise a galaxy, and uh, uh, thousands of galaxies comprise a cluster of galaxies, and such clusters of galaxies are colliding. It's on a huge scale with the gravitational lens the um, mass of the matter. How can we understand the mass of the matter with the gravitational lens? First, a light can be bent with gravity. This is uh, also uh, what is held under the general theory of relativity. Behind a large mass, uh, the image uh, of uh, something that is behind the mass will be distorted. This is a galaxy which has a large mass, and uh, what is behind that galaxy, another galaxy, uh, the light from that galaxy will be bent to observer. So for observer, 
that a galaxy behind uh, will be appearing distorted in a distorted fashion. On the right side, uh, you can see something that is appearing uh, in a, a arc type, and this is the bent light coming from a galaxy in the background. By analyzing this, uh, by analyzing the degree of distortion, we are able to understand understand the distribution of the mass, and that is represented by blue here. It may not appear as though it's uh, distorted, but according to computer analysis, uh, it is uh, distortion. There is something that is uh, difficult to understand. This is not before collision, but after the collision. After the collision, interstellar matter is uh, heated, and so this has to be after the collision of the clusters of galaxies. What is supposedly a dark matter, the mass distribution, even after the collision, appears spherical, clear spherical form. Even after collision, it seems that these two clusters are passing each other. Dark matter is very heavy, but it, the dark matter does not uh, react with each other, even after colliding against each other. This is a computer simulation. This is not actual observation, but computer simulation. Based on what was observed, this is the simulation uh, of trying to recreate what happened after a collision. Two clusters of galaxies collided at the center because of the heat X-ray is emitted, and uh, this is just rotating uh, at uh, one point in time, suspending time. And here, this is uh, what uh, we saw earlier, uh, quite similar to the uh, collision of two clusters of galaxies. And after the collision, two cl clusters uh, will be departing from each other. And uh, this is called a bullet cluster. Small cluster of galaxy has gone through a larger galaxy at the center. So bullet uh, cluster is the smaller cluster of galaxy appearing or acting as though it is a bullet piercing through a larger galaxy. Standard model has difficulty uh, dealing with uh, dark matter. The dark matter has to have zero charge. If there is a charge, there will be strong reaction. It's, uh, and it would mean that a uh, bullet uh, cluster will not be able to pass the other cluster. So all of the uh, quarks, uh, leptons, um, material particles will be ruled out. It also has to have long life uh, for dark matter. It was created, it was formed immediately after Big Bang, but uh, they are still remaining. It means that they have to have very long life. And uh, Z, a particle, and uh, Higgs uh, that uh, have weak force will be ruled out. It cannot be too light. Mass cannot be zero, but it cannot be too light. In formation of a cluster of galaxies, uh, it will not make sense if uh, dark matter is too light. Since it's uh, heavy, it's supposedly heavy, that is why they're called uh, dark matters. So neutrino and uh, quarks uh, will also be ruled out. Uh, there are no candidates uh, for dark matter under the standard model. What is important, uh, the second important point, we have to solve uh, the uh, Higgs cloud problem with a new theory, such as supersymmetry theory and extra dimension theory. Many of these new theories are uh, have uh, candidates for dark matters. When we find a new theory, then the two problems may be addressed at the same time. Point one, point two may be solved at the same time. Point one is that a particle similar to Higgs are found, but not Higgs particles themselves. Point two is that uh, there are uh, dark matter candidates. And the significance of finding of Higgs boson is that the last particle of standard model was found, but that is not the end of the uh, story. Uh, Higgs uh, mass uh, contradiction became a real problem. Now that uh, we have found a Higgs boson, we have to face this contradiction. Dark matters and new particle exploration became a pressing matter. In the beginning of the 20th century, J.J. Thompson discovered electron and Rutherford discovered atomic nucleus. And this was the dawn of the new age of the physics. 
The discovery of Higgs particle is a revolutionary discovery on par with these discoveries in the beginning of the 20th century. So with the discovery of Higgs boson, there was the dawn of the uh, new age of particle physics. And uh, this is uh, universally understood. Uh, there are elementary particle uh, strategy of the world in Europe. There is European strategy for particle physics. Few years, uh, every few years, this is uh, renewed. After 2020 update for a new project chapter, at the beginning of the chapter, it says that an electron positron Higgs factor is the highest priority next collider. In the United States, U.S. Department of Energy has high energy advisory panel, and the panel also issues P5 report every few years. P5 is a particle physics project prioritization panel taking five P's of each of these words. P5 report is the name of the report. And in 2014 version, and uh, currently a debate is underway in the U.S. to update the report. And the latest uh, is still from 2014. And it says use Higgs as new tool for discovery in the beginning of the report. To generate a large amount of Higgs boson, electron-positron collider will have to be built. And this is called Higgs factory. And building Higgs factory is considered the highest priority, and that is an international consensus. There are candidates for Higgs factory. There are four candidates. First is International Linear Collider, ILC. And uh, this is a joint project uh, between the US, Europe, and Japan. For the past 10 years or so, in Japan, uh, candidate sites uh, had been uh, reviewed in Japan. So for the past 10 years, Japan has been playing a key role for ILC. This is a linear collider. Electron-positron will be accelerated in a linear fashion and uh, will be collided at the center. For acceleration, superconductive technology will be used. The total length is about 20 kilometers. Conceptual design is already complete in 2007, and engineering design is, uh, as I mentioned earlier about the Professor Barish, uh, the uh, technical design was already complete in 2013. Next is CLIC, Compact Linear Collider. This is uh, proposed by CERN in Europe. CERN is the uh, very research institute uh, that discovered Higgs boson uh, with a large hadron collider, LHC. This is also linear. This is a two-beam acceleration concept. With one beam, a uh, very uh, high electric field uh, will be created. And with that, the other beam will be accelerated. This is a very complex technology, difficult technology. Conceptual design uh, was complete in 2012. Total length is about 13 kilometers. This is very complex, and acceleration gradient is uh, high, and so length is shorter. Next is CEPC, Circular Electron-Positron Collider. This is proposed by China. In the beginning, uh, the name was Chinese Electron-Positron Collider, but to make it more international, it is uh, recently called Circular Electron-Positron Collider, CEPC. As the name suggests, it's circular. Circumference is about 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers, it, this is a bigger than SSC that was canceled in the United States. Semi-conceptual design, uh, not a full conceptual design, but semi-conceptual conceptual design was completed in 2015, and the last one is Future Circular Collider EE version, FCCEE. This is uh, proposed by CERN in Europe. As uh, the name circular says, this is circular. Circumference is the same as CEPC, about 100 kilometers. Conceptual design was complete in 2018 to 2019. In case of circular colliders, circumference will have to be about 100 kilometers. And uh, as for international linear collider, uh, the construction cost uh, is similar for a linear collider as for circular collider. But as a correction, a, a circular collider construction cost is about twice as high as ILC. ILC already has a technical design. Conceptual design was complete uh, in back in 2007. 
all of these uh, will be colliding electron and positron. Why electron positron colliders? Proton uh, proton collider. This is used by L LHC that, that uh, discovered the Higgs boson. Uh, proton is a composite particle, and that there is a down quark and a gluon. Uh, makes a composite uh, particle of proton, and such uh, complex uh, particles are collided together, uh, unnecessary uh, particles will be created. It will be a very complex reaction, and even if Higgs particle is uh, created, only a small portion of visible particles uh, will be derived from Higgs. As opposed to that, in case of electron and positron, uh, these are elementary particles. The event will be very clean, and if Higgs is formed, then most of the particles uh, that are visible in one event uh, should uh, have derived from Higgs boson, or all may have derived from Higgs boson. And this is, uh, it says, uh, from collapse of the Higgs. Particles are generated, so two particles and uh, all others are from a Higgs. As for Higgs factory, there were a linear and circular uh, colliders, and characteristics of each is shown. In case of circular, electron and positron will be uh, circulated in opposite direction on the circle and the same particle will have multiple opportunities to collide. That is the benefit, but electron and positron will have to be accelerated at high energy, and if uh, it is bent, synchrotron radiation is released and a large energy is lost, so energy has to be uh, resupplied. Consumption of, uh, consumption of energy is very high, and uh, in case of a uh, low energy, uh, that will no longer be Higgs factory, but at low energy, it will be higher performance. In case of linear collider, acceleration will be linear, so synch synchrotron radiation will not be released. Energy will not be lost, and uh, so all of the energy that will be used for acceleration will be energy for particles. Difficulty is that this is a linear acceleration and the collision takes place at the center, so there is only one chance of collision. After collision, you may think uh, that uh, you can uh, redo this again, but in order to do so, bending is necessary and energy will be lost. And if uh, acceleration is uh, increased, Core, uh, it will be uh, scalable. Uh, it is easier to scale to higher energy because it's linear. And for all of the Higgs factories, what is common is that in case of collider types of accelerators, this is always the case. In order to have uh, many uh, collisions of uh, particles, beam has to be narrowed, uh, focused. Particle beam is uh, formed uh, from a bunch, and by having a small bunch, collision is uh, more likely to occur. If we have widely spread a bunch, even with the collision of the bunch, uh, particles will be passing through each other, but if uh, it's a dense bunch, it is more likely to collide with a dense bunch. You are more likely to get a COVID infection. It's kind of similar. In case of sen uh, linear, we have only one chance for collision, so we have to focus beam. This is the comparison of the performance of Higgs factories. Horizontal axis is collision energy, and what is most suitable for Higgs factory is 250 Jeff shown in red arrow, and the vertical axis is luminosity, which is how many new particles are created. In case of Higgs, or in case of Higgs factory, 250 Jeff is the most appropriate level for uh, creation of Higgs boson. That is the uh, level for Higgs factory. Black line is uh, FCCEE, the last one that I introduced. This is a circular collider. Blue line is Chinese CEPC. This is also circular. Circular accelerators have a higher collision energy, uh, will have lower performance when beam energy is greater. Red is IOC. 
And this uh, lower line, this is what is called a baseline, and this dotted line is upgrade, upgraded version. This is uh, uh, upgraded with a double the bunch, double the amount of bunch, and this is uh, about 5 to 6 percent of the total cost. So there are people who say that this should be the baseline. And at uh, high energy, when it's scalable to uh, scale to high energy, it will be more expensive, and uh, it will take about 60 percent of the initial construction cost. Once uh, it is scaled to high uh, high energy, bunch uh, can be doubled once again. And the green is click. Click uh, uses two beams to accelerate. That is the scheme of click. It will be starting at high energy in the beginning, at around the 350. It is not most suitable for Higgs factory, but it can go up to even higher energy. Looking at this, there are four Higgs factories, and we can see that they are more or less equal in performance. But we also have to think about the cost and degree of maturity. In case of circular colliders, cost is twice as high as ILC, according to some, and in terms of maturity of technology, ILC already has technical design, so it's most advanced. As for operational cost, operational cost, what is important is energy consumed, electricity consumed, and this is the consumption of energy. Horizontal axis is collision energy, vertical axis is power, and this is the Higgs factory region, similar to earlier case. Black is FCCEE, blue is Chinese CEPC, and both are circular colliders. Circular colliders mean that at higher energy, higher the consumption of power. In case of ILC, that is shown in red line, uh, red line, and dotted line is the upgraded version of ILC. In case of ILC, consumption of electri electricity is about half that of circular collider. Construction cost is about half of the cir circular collider. In case of ILC, consumption of electricity is also half that of the circular Lighter, and it's more mature in terms of technology, and uh, Higgs factory uh, performance is equivalent, then uh, it's uh, self-evident that which should be built. I wonder what your view is. Now for a more details of ILC, before getting into that, I would like to discuss the principles behind acceleration of particles and principles behind measurement or detection of particles. This is uh, common for all of the Higgs factories and uh, true for all high energy detectors. First, acceleration. Voltage is applied to parallel uh, metal plates and electric field is uh, created and electric uh, field will be accelerated and uh, one volt of uh, uh, voltage will be creating an electron which is called 1 EV and the Higgs factory will require 120 billion volt. Such a high voltage is uh, actually not possible. What is necessary is high frequency ac acceleration cavity, and this appears uh, in a light, something like this photograph, and it's, the length is about one meter. Within this, uh, electromagnetic uh, wave will be uh, sent uh, to create a constant wave of electric field. It will be oscillating, looking uh, forward or looking backward. Uh, these uh, may be looking opposite, and the charged particles will be run through this cavity. And always, uh, it will be facing uh, electric field uh, that is looking forward. Even though oscillation is uh, facing forward or facing backward, when electron is passing through, uh, it will be always facing forward, and it will assist acceleration. And if we make many of these, we can increase energy. And so we do not have to have very large voltage in case of IELTS. See, there are two beams, and uh, one beam uh, will have about uh, 400 billions of these high-frequency cavities. As for the uh, these high-energy uh, detectors, same principle will apply for detection of particle. Charged particles such as electrons and protons will be measured. This is a helium atom, which is electrically neutral. Uh, there are uh, two electrons uh, surrounding the nucleus, it's uh, neutral, and even by applying voltage, it will not move. 
a charged particle will come and one electron will be released. Uh, this is ionization. Uh, so this is a negative a charge, uh, one positive charge, one helium ion. And when uh, voltage is applied, the electron will move and signal will be sent. Helium uh, ion will also move, but mass is about few thousand times of uh, electrons, so this is almost uh, non-visible. But uh, using this, we are able to look at the trajectory of charged particles. Well, for example, in a cylinder, helium gas is filled, and uh, when voltage is applied, and uh, after a charged particle passes through, there will be electric current. In the helium gas, depending on the voltage applied, uh, electrons will be moving at the uh, same speed. And uh, where the electron was and uh, the time that electron passed that time, uh, place can be measured. And uh, we will know the time of the movement of the electron. So trajectory can be measured in three-dimensional fashion. This is just one example. By combina combining these, and uh, when magnetic field is applied, charged particle will be uh, curved. And uh, from the curvature, we are also able to calculate movement. And with the combination of, of these technologies, high resolution detector can be built. This is a human being a detector. It's a very large uh, apparatus. And uh, electron and a positron, the oppositely charged particles will be collided at the center, and Z particle and Higgs boson will be created. Z particles uh, will be uh, converted to muon pair, and Higgs boson uh, will be converted to B quark pair after collapsing, and each B quark will be particle bundle or jet. Quark cannot exist in a naked fashion. Quark itself, therefore, will not be released, but bundle particles will be released, and each bundle particles or jet can be uh, measured by the detector to recompose the original particles. So ILC, Higgs uh, factory, what is the most important objective uh, with the precise measurement of Higgs boson to identify new theory or to identify the correct new theory? And to do so, Higgs uh, particles uh, will have to be generated and the generation ratio will be measured and collapse ratio to various particles will be measured. And the strength of reaction of various particles in Higgs boson or reaction coefficient can be measured, and the deviation of the reaction coefficient from standard model can be uh, analyzed, and deviation pattern can be discerned. The two uh, bottom charts show two examples of new theories. Vertical axis is the uh, amount of deviation from the standard model, how much uh, deviation there is of a reaction coefficient, uh, negative 5%, negative 10%, and the uh, Higgs, Higgs bosom will be uh, reacting with a Z particle, W particle, or bottom, tau, charm, top. When we look at the deviation pattern, we are able to identify the correct new theory. There are many new theories that were analyzed in this way, and as an example, nine new theories are compared with standard model. Ten theories are shown here. And how much uh, distinction is possible is shown. Dark green, uh, clear, clearly discernible. Pale green, discernible. Orange, vaguely discernible. And red, not distinguishable. For example, there is a composite. Radium, radium theory, and composite theory, and how distinct the two are. It's pale green, so the two are distinct. The greater the amount of green, it is better, and the smaller the amount of red, it is uh, uh, worse. Uh, it is good, and uh, most of it is green, so it's uh, able to detect uh, in almost a pinpoint precision which uh, theory is correct. And uh, in this way, we are able to identify the correct uh, theory. And earlier, I mentioned there is the second point. The second point was that many of these new theories have candidates for dark matter. 
perhaps with Higgs factory, uh, what, uh, the new particles found in the Higgs factory may include a dark matter, or it may be about twice as high that level. If we can find dark matter in Higgs factory, that's very good. But if it's at a higher energy, energy will have to be scaled up to increase energy. And so there will be a strong motivation to conduct such research. And if new particles are indeed discovered, is that new particle a dark matter or not? That will have to be analyzed. And how can we analyze this? First, uh, properties of new particles will be measured. Newly discovered particles, mass, number of quantums, and uh, reaction coefficient will be measured by accelerating. And uh, looking at this together with the Big Bang theory, we can calculate how much of these remain in the current universe. And from astronomical prediction, how much dark matter uh, there is is predicted. And if it matches, we can say that this newly found particle is dark matter indeed. This chart shows the current uh, amount of dark matter on the vertical axis green belt is the actual observation, uh, the amount of uh, dark uh, matter from the actual observation. Horizontal axis, it says MX. Uh, please don't worry about MX. This is under a new theory. Uh, this is a parameter related to the mass of dark matter under a certain new theory. There is a blue rectangle at the center. If we have ILC, this is uh, how precisely we can predict. And uh, this will be compared against astronomical measurement. And the red part is the degree of precision of prediction without ILC. And clearly, astronomical uh, measurement, in order to match that, we need ILC. This is my final slide. This is the history of the universe, shown in a simplified diagram. Time is from left to right. First, there was the Big Bang. And at a very fast speed, space inflates a very, at very fast speed. And quarks and leptons are formed. And protons and neutrons and atomic nucleus are formed. But back then, the particles that were flying around are mostly charged particles. That means that light will be scattered, and light cannot be propagated. And so there is a light, and there is a lot of light. But there is a very high energy, so it's very white, and we are not able to see clearly. And after that, nuclear nucleus of atoms and electrons will be uh, bound to create uh, atoms, and all the all of these are neutral. And uh, so a light will begin to be propagated and uh, things will become visible. And this means uh, that clearing up of the universe. And that was about uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And then uh, neutral uh, atomic uh, nucleus are flying around. And before the first star it is created, it will have to take uh, 400 million years. It, so uh, during that time, there is no light coming out. It's, it's called a dark age. When we have a first star, then eventually a galaxy will be formed and planets will be formed. Immediately after the Big Bang, there is a quantum soup. And to do a research of what occurred in the quantum soup is within the scope of quantum physics and the research on Higgs uh, bosom. Here, Higgs bosom and dark matter must have played an important role when we have stars and galaxies and afterwards gravitational wave uh, measurement and other space observation will be very important. On this, the next speaker, Professor Barish, will be speaking about this. Thank you very much.